Alrighty, here we go. Hey there, everybody. It's the Nasty One here again, and welcome back to the next episode of the Platypi Franchise Rebuild here in the Super Mega Baseball 4, year number one. Last episode for our Platypi, we went into the finals against the Hot Corners, and we dominated, winning 9-4, to 11-5, and 25-2 to two to sweep the final series, three games to nine, and earn our first ring here in, the ch in this series as we take the title here in year number one with relative ease. Now we move into the offseason here to see if we can keep this team together or if we're going to lose a lot of these players that we have come to know and love here throughout the first year as manager of the Platify. Let's see what we got going on today. Any retirements? No retirements. Everybody wants to come back and stay in the league. So that is very interesting. I thought we would have at least one person who would retire. Uh, let's see what we can do. All right. Okay, so Camilla Cuffingham, she wants to move up her price point a little bit. I think we'll roll this with Camilla. I like having her on the team. She's a good offensive weapon for us. Not exactly the best defensively, but she's getting there. Uh, and she still is young. She's only going to be 23, still developable. Decent contact for righty trade. I'm okay with offering her her current salary. It's a 97%. Let's see what happens. Yeah, all right, Camilla. Now, Sponge Dryden, I am going to move on from. He just didn't really do too much here in the series. Um, he has RBI Hero, which he used from time to time to be good. But I think we need another more consistent backup catcher option because when Cuffingham struggled, well, Wugliams really had to pick up the load by the plate, and Dryden was really just the placeholder just sitting there. He kind of was just here getting our dif discipline traits up to Tier 3. So he's out. Peak Physique, big coming out party in the f playoffs for Peak. He did really well. I liked what I saw from him most of the season. Ended up going 349, five homers, 20 RBIs, and then in the playoffs, he had another five homers as well and hit 400. So he did really well. I'm impressed. 8485, we're going to roll this at 71%. The only thing that might go wrong here is his loyalty's a little low, but he does stick around to stay, so that's wonderful. Great. That didn't bite us in the ass. Sebs Wilson is a wonderful, fantastic backup first baseman that we can continue to develop behind Peak Physique. And he's a good pinch hitter to use as a power bat off the bench, so we're going to re-sign him here. Kitty Kaufman, worth 9.6, making 8.5, once 8.9. Let's roll this and keep her as low as it is. It's 98% chance we should be okay, and we are. Perfect. Thank you, Kitty. Love having Kitty on the team. Beefcake is 100% on board. We're slightly overpaying him based on what his value currently is, but, I mean, come on. It's Beefcake Stevens, the captain. We ain't letting him walk. Sky Rodriguez worth five, making five. She wants five. I'm going to let Sky go. I just, yes, Sky is a great pinch hitter off the bench, and she did really well in that final Hot Corners game, but I kind of need some with a little bit more tricks up her sleeve, especially since Swolson's already kind of like a power. A pinch hitter off the bench. Maybe we need someone who can like play the field as well on the infield. And Sky, really, the only thing she does is hit, and she only gets used against lefties more often than not. So we're gonna let her go. Charlie freaking Lopez didn't regress a whole lot this upcoming season. The old man got a ring. He's actually making under what he's valued. Let's keep the man. I mean, he's earned it. He's played really, really well. I can't argue with how consistently well he did. Hans Slaperio is a nice solid backup behind Lopez that can move into the starting lineup if Lopez regresses down far enough. So Slaperio is wonderful to have as a bench option here. Let's go ahead and re-sign him as well. Rory Crowds, good solid development this year for Rory. Uh, he's played really, really well for us for most of the year. Uh, struggled a little bit there at the end of the season, but you know what? He's a nice solid young player that's developing. He's coming along rather nicely. We can just beef up that contact and arm a little bit, and he'd be pretty freaking good. So I'm willing to keep him around here for another go. For another go around, 97%. We can go ahead and roll this, and he'll stick around. Perfect. Thank you, Rory. Hey, I'm calling her. Wonderful RBI man in the middle of the lineup. He did basically everything we asked of him in the regular season and the postseason. I see no reason to get rid of him. With 99%, let's roll this. And he does stick around. Perfect. Excellent. All righty. Hera O. Wugliams, our right fielder, youngest player, one of our youngest players on the team. She's going to be 22. Kitty's also going to be 22. They're like the two youngest. Very consistent. 
really just need to upgrade her speed and her power, and she'll be the complete package. She's a really solid player. I love what I see from Hera day in and day out. I want her to stick around, and she's not asking for any more money. That's perfect. Arsenio Armstrong, kind of feeling I should move away from Arsenio. I'm just thinking maybe, I know he's got the cannon arm trait, which is really nice, but I'm really thinking we need to move in a different direction and maybe get a little bit younger as a backup outfielder possibly, but we can always come back and re-sign him if necessary. But right now, I think I'm going to let Armstrong go. AVA, Ace Von Asen. This is the big man, the ace, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Put the team on his back in the regular season. Went 5-0 and in his eight starts in the regular season. And then in the postseason, he did kind of struggle, not going to lie. He did win two of his three starts, averaging about six innings, but he did also average giving up three runs a start. So, yeah, he had a little bit of a step back in the postseason, but... All in all, not a lot of regression from Ace. He's still at a high level. I got 88%. I'm going to roll 88%. I want to see what happens. He's sticking around. Perfect. Lefty South Palm was just a playoff rental, so we are going to let him go. We're going to try and look to get another player in the offseason. Uh, Cecil Sawyer, really solid pitching performances so far this year. I love what Cecil brings to the table. And in postseason, he did really, really well. He stepped up his game, so I really want to keep him here. And he's not asking for more money, so we'll keep him. Perfect. Rusty Nozzle doesn't want more money. He's worth $5 million. He's making 4 6 Surprisingly solid number four pitcher. Like, Rusty was our second most consistent starter for the whole season. And I was very impressed with what he did. Despite having a bad trade and injury prone, it never really affected him until the final start of the regular season and then in his second start in the postseason. So... It very rarely activated, and he actually pitched relatively well, all things considered. He managed to get two complete games. He was the only pitcher in our staff to throw a complete game in the regular season. I mean, what more could this guy do? Like, he's surprisingly good, and I'm willing to give him another ride. Rufus Zumar, he's averaging, he's under about what he was. He was a solid reliever for us last year. He's basically our closer. I love him. Let's bring him back. He's going to be 30, but that's perfect. He's still a high-level player, hasn't regressed. Cracker Barrel is just a playoff rental. We're going to let him go. Archie Alonzo. Uh, Eddie Stetson, we're going to let go. He's just aging. He's up to 36 now. I think we need to go get younger in the bullpen here a little bit. Sign Blinder is extremely mid and very disappointing, not only to me, but also to you guys who are watching the series. Had his biggest moment in the postseason there against the Grafflers, but other than that, he was just extremely mid, so I'm going to let him go. And then Archie Alonzo, I love Archie. He's pitched really well for us for the most part. Yeah, he did struggle in the regular season, but at the end of the regular season, he started putting everything together and was pitching scoreless outing after scoreless outing. And then in the postseason, he just kept it that way and only gave up one run the entire postseason run. So I like Archie. I think he can stick around. 99% roll on this one. Let's see what we can do. We are overpaying him slightly, so we'll need to keep that in mind moving forward. If it does continue to go down in regression, we can move on and replace him in the regular season. So right now we have three openings in the bullpen, one in the starting rotation, one bench outfield slot, uh, one bench infield slot, and one bench catcher. So basically a bunch of bench players we need to look to bring in. Let's see who's available. Big retirements around the league. Who do we got? All right, Jerry Caps from the Crocs, Wade Hobbs from the Wide Loads, Remington Sharp from the Sandcats, our OG reliever, Tucker Turlington from the Grapplers, okay, Bishop Fuller from the Heaters, K.O. Neomo from the Sirloin, she was a free agent, and then Joffrey Rockman from the Moose. Okay, not a lot of retirements, but a decent amount. And then we released, uh, what, five, six, seven people? Yeah. All right, let's have a look at the options we have available to us. So there's rookie Cozy Spooner who's now facing, who's been uh, generated now. He was uh, not generated in the first season. I guess the player pool was too full. Uh, there's also, for other backup options, there's Kimmy Smoke, Mamori Yoshima, Pedro Nixon, uh, Pex Flexed from the Sand, Saw Teeth, Rocky Backsup's a little too low rated, uh, Harry Backman, who basically just be a DH, but we don't play with the DH, so he's kind of not someone I probably should go after. Johnson Swanson is a good platoon option as a catcher. 
This is a really weak catcher class. Aoshima, I think, would be a good platoon option as well, but she can't field. She has the arm, though. I think Pex Flex would be the other ideal one. I think he's the other option we look at here. First base, I don't think we need first base. What do we have? We have a peak and Seb. I think we're good. We have a bench middle infielder. So we can use either a bench third baseman or like a bench infielder in general. Okay. So we're good at first base. I'm not really seeing anything too exciting here outside of God Senda's testing from the grapplers. And even then, I don't want to replace peak physique for him, so we're okay. Second base, Walker runs his testing. He'd be a good utility bench option from the freebooters. Jeb jumps from the hot corners is testing. Randy Mann from the hot corners as well. Maggie Rags is a good utility player. Should be a good solid defense only bench option. What we got? We got Harley Barnett. That's a rookie. Okay. Split time with Beefcake. I don't want to go that high, probably. Bad Hop Brown. Sky is still out here. Okay. Kara Kawaguchi. Augustine McCarthy. Ian Fielder would be a decent bench option, too, I think. Dig at foot, though. Hey, Dig. How's it going, buddy? I love Dig. He'd be a good bench option. Uh, Goose Caboosler's out here, although I'm using him quite a bit in other series, so I'm probably not going to look to bring him in. Still, he'd be a good bench option to have as a utility infielder that can play anywhere. Ralph Blue would also be a solid bench option as well. Heck, we could even go bench outfielder even and have a fifth outfielder ready, especially if a Williams is going to be catching. The fifth outfielder might actually behoove us to have. Rosie Hardman be decent. She's not a great fielder. She's basically a power bat. Probably not her then. Natasha Gilmore. Okay. Solid. I think she would qualify for that. Bad jumps is bad, but, you know, she's a good speedster, decent fielder, decent arm. Good starting point on the hitting ratings. I'm okay with that. Slash trips is testing free agency. Okay. Lamb to Molly, Ray's Rufo, Bo Belter, Hieronymus Jackson. Damien Rush wouldn't be a bad bench option, I think, but eh, maybe someone younger. Willie Bacon's testing from the hot corners. Okay. Bryce and Avalos, although he only plays right field. So if we had him, he could play in place of a Wugliams in right field, although he can't move around the outfield, which is what ideally I would want for my backup outfielder. Daniel Yoshida and Ella Royds kind of do the same thing that a Wugliams do, does, plays uh, you know catcher and right field. Ricardo bang it. That would be ideal as a bench option. RBI zero is bad, but clutch is decent. Always bring back Armstrong. There is an option there. Norm Phenomena is a free agent. Interesting. All right, pitchers. What do we got? So we have one hole in the starting rotation that we're replacing. We have rookie Seth Dubs, 19-year-old, crafty. Good traits, pick officer, lead slider. He's an accuracy-based pitcher, though, so that's going to be a problem. Morgan Boyle, solid pitcher. Good, another accuracy-based pitcher, though. Gershwin Millstream, another accuracy-based pitcher. Three in a row. Hmm. Got Trey Mondo, who's back end of the rotation. Uh, Tarak Smith is testing from the hot corners. He's built himself up decently to a B-minus already. I like that. 
Frogo is an option. I'm probably not going to bring him back. I just don't think he's earned it, you know. Tonda Black is testing free agency. Noah Kaiser's testing free agency. Yolanda Cooper's testing free agency. Turn burner. Maurice Brick. Okay. Now things are getting interesting. Pearl Pansky's out here. Elian Midtown. Elian Midtown. Okay, another accuracy based pitcher. What is all the accuracy based pitchers here this year? My God. Punchy Patterson. We got Merle Proctor. Okay, decent. Hi, I no. Beavis or cheap? No. Extremely mid. Bob McClary, okay, long reliever. Stitch Grapowski's out here. Who else we got? Lola Nops is out here too. That's a couple of young long relief options. We could add at the bullpen if we wanted them. Def Wedham's a decent, but maybe not someone I'm looking at. Got Homer Casey, who'd be a mop-up guy. Okay, scholarly. Rig Coral, another 19-year-old. Al Sorelli. Oh, reverse splits. Hello, hello, my friend. Where have you been all my life? Heimlich is still out here. I might bring him back. He is young, after all. Uh, outside of that, what else we got? We got Rocket Ramon. He'd be decent. Rick Towers, he's decent as well. Chucky Filthwick's out here. I'm not going to be able to afford him. Lupinovich is available. Okay. Hasn't retired yet. She's a risk, but we can look at her. Iceman Bowen, we could actually have a closer on the roster. I don't really like closers, though, so I probably won't even look at him anymore after this. But there we go. Let's get up through the couple, first couple rounds here. Couple signings going on. All right, so we're through five. Let's do the first like seven round. Like let's do the first nine rounds. And you know what? Let's do ten. Let's make it an even number. Okay, so Blamo Tamale is the only other signing. Okay. So everyone else, everyone that we have starred is still available to be signed. So that's good. Let's see what we're doing here. So we got Cozy Spooner, Pex Flexed, Johnson Swanson. All of them are within a million dollars of their asking price, but we got to keep in mind who we're actually bringing in here. Uh, Walker Runs, he's getting close, but he's not quite there yet, and we can wait on him. Same with Maggie Rags. Sky, we got Ian Fielder still. He's actually under his price point, but he's not worth it yet. Dig, if Forto's under his price point, he's at a million dollars. I like Dig just because it's funny to have him as a bench option. Both him and Kabooster can play the entire infield as a bench option, and maybe we just don't need like a big bat off the bench because we already have a couple big ones already. Maybe we just need to go get like a defensively minded fielder. I mean, Goose does bring power to his game as well when you pinch hit with him, but he's known in the past to struggle, so. Plus, Dig is really, really cheap, and I like that. So, we can keep going. I don't think there's any need to worry about him just yet. Rob Blue's still out here as well. There's Gilmore. Everybody's, like, within a million of themselves. I, don't, I think the only person we need to worry about signing right now is Yoshida. And Norm. I think Norm's the other one. Yeah, and then these guys are the next big ones that are probably going to get ready and go here. All right, I think we can go round by round now. There goes Norman Maurice. Okay, the top level guys. Probably guys we couldn't afford either, so I'm not worried about that. Round 12, let's see. McMahon, Filthwick, Toot Whistle, Sauter, Trips, and Dexterous. Again, more high level guys we couldn't afford. 
Round 13, there goes Turnburner, Slinger, okay. God Sendez, he's going to the B-Wolves. McLaurie, oh man, they jumped for him early, okay. Nacho Chris, Raton to Black, Grapowski, Gold, Bowen, Primo, Yoshida, there's jumps. Okay, now we need to seriously take a look at this. I think we need to address the starting position, starting pitcher thing now. Since these are the more high level guys we're looking at here. I do like pick officer and elite slider. That is pretty good from dubs. I do like that as a trait. Boyle. B overall, solid starting point. Okay, Gershwin Millstream, solid starting point as well. Both are basically copies of each other. They're competitive pitchers who are accuracy based. Dubs is a B minus. He's a bit of a step back from South Palm, but that's fine. Sawyer would be the number two. He has pick off Sir and Elite Slider, which I do like. Solid pitch mix as well. And we don't want to break the bank here either. Proctor, okay. Falls behind isn't bad. It's not great either. Uh, I think we'll go with the young guy here. We're going to go with Seth Dubs. I think I'm going to give him a shot. Those traits are just too enticing to pass up. I know he doesn't have a lot of velocity or junk, and that's a big risk to take, but I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like he's the answer here. So let's bring him in. So fill up the hole we have in the starting rotation. All right, let's go to pitching. Let's go to relievers now. All right, so we lost the long reliever, McClary. We also lost Grapowski. Lola Maps is still here, and she's solid. She's not the greatest, but she's solid. Uh, we have Rig Coral, who is a spirited pitcher. I like that. He's lefty, too. Lefties are always hard to come by. Homer Casey is a mop-up guy. He does have pick officer, though, so that's nice. Um, Scarelli I really love, and I think I'm going to sign him for sure just because I need another arm in the bullpen to complement Zumar. So I think Scarelli is a good add addition here. He can replace uh, Steady Eddie, I guess. He's a good solid arm. I like him. I think Lupinovich is too old. I like her, but she's just too old, and she's going to regress. Brick Towers is a maybe. I'm just not sold on him. Rocket Ramon's probably a no. I just The low accuracy is just taking me away from him. I like Knops. I like having extra length out in the bullpen to work with, so I think we'll sign her. She'd be a nice cheap addition. And then we also need, uh, I think I think we'll take Corral. Heimlich just didn't do it for us last year. And uh, Casey, although he is, he's just too low rated in the bullpen, I think, as a C. It's too much of a risk. I think we take Rig Corral here. He's young. He's developable. He's only 19. Another lefty arm. I think we can use that. Because let's see, righty, lefty, righty, righty. Yeah, we need another lefty. So, yeah, putting in Corral here is a good move. All right, so we're done with pitching, I believe. I don't think I have anyone else start on that one. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good with pitching. Okay. All right, now what do we got? So we need backup players here. So we need uh, another backup catcher. I think Pex Flex is going to be too much money, although he's the best option available. Cozy Spooner is a very developmental catcher, and I don't think I want to be shooting myself in the foot that badly. Johnson Swanson is a good player. He's got little hack. First pitch player is a bummer, but he's a good solid catcher that can just like back up and come in as a defensive sub for 
cuffing him in late games, and he has some pop in his bat too. So I like Johnson. I think he's the answer here. Bring him in for Sponge. All right, moving to, uh, we need what? Bench infield and bench outfield, I believe, and that's it. Walker runs. I think he's too high rated as a beam, as a backup, a six and a half, knowing I'm going to need something cheaper than that. Likewise, Sky is a little too expensive as well. I'm kind of feeling either a Fordo or a Caboosler here. I know I don't like having three shortstops on the roster, but they're the best options of what I'm looking for right now. And since we want to save money, I think we're going to go with Diga Forto here just because Goose has performed poorly for me in the past, and I still haven't quite gotten over that. And adding Dig is a good defensive option here off the bench that can, we can just plug in late in games to like come up, be a fielder, which we do need with Kaufman, who's not exactly the best. And same if like Swolson's in and for Peak Physique for whatever reason, he's not the greatest fielder. Charlie Lopez has not been known at times to struggle, but I like Dig. I think he's going to be a solid signing. I think he's going to be good for the team's spirit as well. And then we just need a bench outfield roll, and we are done here today, guys. So we have Natasha Gilmore, who's worth $6.4 million, 20-year-old. She would develop pretty quickly. Armstrong has already proven that he's good. Um, hmm. This is a crafty player we're going to be replacing because it's Armstrong slot. We already have Max Boosted Spirited Traits. We don't need Bang It. We have Roids, who has Stimulated. Okay. She's cheaper than Armstrong. I like that. And Bryson Avalos. Okay. He's not a great hitter. Decent fielder. Good arm. Great, good speed, too. Has high pitch. Hmm. I think if we want a true backup behind... I think we want a true backup behind Hera to play right field when she's catching. It has to be Bryson Avalos or Ella Royds. Both of them are solid backup options. And since we're trying to save money-ish here, I think we go with the cheaper option and we take the young guy, Bryson Avalos. He's a good defensive option. Offense is bad, but if we just aim in the top of the zone, we can just you know sit on those pitches and work with that. So let's go ahead and bring him in. He can replace Armstrong here on the roster. Not bad, and we finished with $11.7 million. That's pretty good, actually. I was looking at it stay above $10 million here in the budget. We managed to do that. I was aiming ideally for like $16 million to have five hundred k, but with the amount of players that we managed to keep, I'm kind of happy and sacrificing a little bit to get some cheaper bench options in here and beef up our bullpen a little bit, especially with Scarelli. It's a good compliment for Alonzo and Zumar, and our pitching rotation's a little weak, but I think we can work with this. I mean... We saw how well Rusty Nozzle did last year. Seth Dubs is a little bit better. He should be fine as well. I like it. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I know we took a bit, a bit of a step back in the discipline trait category, but I think that's worth the sacrifice. I think uh, there's just... I think maybe our traits were carrying us a bit too much. Maybe this will be more of a challenge now that we've uh, decided not to go that route anymore. Let's sim to the end of the offseason here. Relatively quick. Holy crap, under 30 minutes. <laughs> I think that's a new personal best. <laughs> All right, not bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the free agents and like just see if there's like anyone good out here with like really good traits or anything. So Trey Mondo is still available, young starter. We got Caboosler still out here. Uh, Huck and Duck. Eh. Polk Foster with Bunter. Bunter I'm not a fan of. Dugout Fives. Bad Hop Brown. I mean, Dugout Fives is pinch perfect. Tarzan Woodburn has Big Hack. Eh. Javier Cortez has Steeler. Okay. Dela Cruz, she'd be a solid bench option. She has little hack. Okay. We got David Diggler out here with walk prone. Mm, not the greatest. Landon Fair, pinch perfect. And eh, not a big fan of Landon. Flash Ladar with magic hands. He's decent. Good bench option, probably. Wardo Electro, fastball hitter. No. Mm, Steve O'Reese is pinch perfect. Although he's a little low rated. 
Rookie of Augustine McCarthy is out here. First pitch prayer, Magic Hands. Sign Stealer on Rafi Slaps. Pick Officer, no. Mind Gamer on Kelby King, hey. Pickleford also has Mind Gamer as well. Sprinter on Kenna Corn. Okay. Oh, Dilly Dow's a free agent. She left the Grapplers, it looks like. Bukaleg, Man and Moon, eh. Seymour Socks with Bunter. K Collector on Franzilla. Okay, that's a good trade. Elite Cutter, Tapler as Bunter, Pinch Perfect, First Pitch Slayer on Burko. Pinch Perfect on Martinez, eh, he's a little too low rated, I think. Rally Stopper on Rippin, no. Fastball hitter, no. Not with RBI zero. Base rounder. Mm, okay. Ooh, tough out of Manzano. Clutch on Alba. RBI here on McKinney. Okay, I think that's it. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and sim up to our first game this season to see who we're going to be playing on opening day. It looks like it's going to be the Overdogs. Okay. Any doubleheaders? There's a doubleheader immediately after it where we will take on the Heaters with Elmo Slayer and Anita Bean. Okay, so our off our start of the season is going to be... So it's the Overdogs and the Heaters. We're actually going to do... Um, every episode's going to be doubleheaders for this series because it takes so long to get through 32 games and we can't sim. So we're just going to do doubleheaders every episode. So our first episode is going to be Overdogs and Heaters, and we'll see AVA take on Punchy Patterson in the opener, and then Cecil Sawyer will take on Elmo Slayer in the second half of that episode. So that should be a good matchup to see. Solid development we have options here. Ooh, well, fielding for all Wugnams isn't exactly a need per se. <laughs> Zumar, chance to gain an elite fork ball trait. Okay, I, I'm intrigued. Scarelli could get stimulated on top of reverse splits as a reliever. You don't say. That is really good. I like that. Chance to lose pick officer. Nope, that's dumb. Uh, ooh, contact for Swolson and become an infielder. That's good, too. I like that one, and I like Scarelli's as well. Lee Rufus is iffy. Oweglium's isn't really necessary, and Dubs is kind of a risk. So, All right, we'll set the lineup and call today here. There we go. The opening day lineup will be set. We'll run through it next time, guys. That is going to do it for this episode. Very quick, abbreviated offseason today as our championship platypi managed to stay together for the most part as we brought back a lot of our original team and only had seven openings to fill. We end up bringing in veteran catcher Johnson Swanson from the division rival B-Wolves. He'll be splitting time with Cuffingham as a defensive-minded catcher. Uh, we also bring in uh, Dig Eforto as a defensive sub off the bench as a utility infielder who we could plug in late in games to field. We also bring in uh, out, backup outfielder Bryson Avalos. He can play right field when Williams is going out to catch and vice versa. He's also a decent pinch hitter off the bench with high pitch. Really more so geared towards the speed and defense, though. Bring in starter rookie Seth Dubs, the 19-year-old. He's going to be our number three man in the rotation. Uh, he's an accuracy-based pitcher who's got a lot of holes in his game, but I think his stuff can develop pretty quickly, and he's got really good traits to go with it. So I think he's going to be a solid starter. Moving to the bullpen, this is where our biggest overhaul was. We add Lola Nops from the Grapplers to add some extra length behind Zumar. We also bring in rookie Al Scarelli as he has got reverse splits. He's going to be a late-inning dominant guy. And then uh, we also bring in rookie Rig Corral as a B-minus guy who has got decent accuracy and decent velocity already on day one. So he's going to be a solid option to use as well. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. Uh, Off-season is complete, so now the Platypi run on the postseason is done. So now we can go back to having the four franchises rotating through on the channel. I believe the longest one without an episode is the Reapers, so we're probably going to start with them. Then it's going to be the Cutters. Then it'll be the uh, Furry Flyers. Then we'll be back around to the Platypi after that. But thank you so much for watching. If you made it this deep, I appreciate the support as always. If you haven't already, hit the follow and or subscribe buttons down below here on Twitch. Be notified next time I go live. And if you haven't already over on YouTube, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Link to Twitch down in the description below if you guys want to come over, watch the games live before they're posted. And also follow me over on this platform as well if you so choose. I'll catch you on the next episode, everybody. Until then, this is The Nasty One signing off. Have a wonderful day, evening, or afternoon, wherever you guys may be.